Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to Mental Health and You, another episode designed to help to break down the barriers and stigma of mental health, particularly in communities of color. I'm your host, Cynthia Timms, and I hope you get so much out of this show and continue to use the resources that we're going to share for your benefit not only mentally and emotionally, but spiritually and physically as well. Um, It is one thing, sorry, the photographer. I gotta give um, notice, I've gotta give an acknowledgement. The photographer, Paul Strand, who was a uh, who was a founder of one of the, uh, the, modern, the modern photography movement in New York, mm-hmm. Paul Strand. He said that it is one thing to photograph people. It is another to make others care about them, revealing the core of their humanness. Mm-hmm. Let me repeat that. It is one thing to photograph people. It is another to make others care about them by revealing the core of their humanness. With that, I want to introduce to you two great photographers, hopefully, and I know following in the tradition of Paul Strand. I don't want to set your brothers up, but here we go. <laughs> um, first is Azine Thomas. Azine has been photographing for over 20 years. A documentary photographer, He's photographed all over New York City and other places, um, including for the National Action Network, uh, for Swan Gallery, where his uh, images can be seen and have been purchased by many uh, collectors from all over the country, by the Schomburg, by the Conti Collin, and other places where good photography is seen. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Mental Health and You, Azim. And thank you for having us. Also, next to Azine is Jose Ramon, another fine photographer. Jose is the, uh, has been photographing for over 10 years. Uh, he is the uh, curator and the creator of the White Shirt Project, right? Right. The right. White Shirt Project, uh, a project designed, because we're going to talk a lot. I mean, that's, that's something. It's a project designed to bring awareness to mental illness, particularly in the um, gay and lesbian community, well, as well as people, well, people of color, as mm-hmm. well as their supporters. Mm-hmm. Wonderful images, and I, I just got so much, when I looked at it, it's like the white shirt project. It's, uh, it, it reminded me so much, you know, it's like a canvas. Right. It's like a canvas that, you know, as we photographers, you know, mm-hmm. what does that image because when I thought about it, and I want to start with you, Jose. Mm-hmm. i get right back to you. You can jump in, I see. <laughs> but Jose, when I looked at that, that, that uh, I was looking through the images in preparation for this show, The White Shirt Project, and what came to mind as a, as a photographer myself was a canvas, right. particularly with the white shirts, because white shirts, when you think about white shirts, it's like it's an image. Right. It's a, it's a canvas, mm-hmm. and there's what is what is what is photography to us? What is art to us? Mm-hmm. We're we're putting in our own little something on that image. Correct. So when I was looking at it, and I was thinking, you know, on uh, the, the 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 subjects, the people, the stories. Exactly. You know, there was a there was a little bit of this there. There's a little bit of depression. There's a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of despair, a little anger there. That was on my canvas. That's on that white shirt. Yes. But it's in the middle of that. There's also resiliency. Mm-hmm. There's also hope. There's also, my goodness, I'm going to keep going in spite mm-hmm. of everything. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me, That's what right. inspired you? What inspired <coughs> How long, what was, what inspired you to do this and why did you do it? Okay, cool. Thank you for reminding me. I'm so happy. You're very welcome. Um, I suffer from PTSD and depression. Mm. I was diagnosed a couple of years ago Mm -hmm. and um, I was in that endless cycle. I was going around in circles, medication, doctors, therapy. I really didn't have an outlet. 
until I picked up a camera. And oh. uh, this was about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. over 10. And I, I was concentrating on other things, so many different things, but I never really focused on any one particular thing until I thought of this project. How do I convey what I'm going through, how I'm feeling, my day as it, go, as it comes along mm -hmm. to the public, to the world? Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Um, so the White Shirt Project enabled me to use a shirt mm -hmm. and use it as a vehicle for other people to also tell their stories. Mm -hmm. So it was that canvas, but it was also therapy and a canvas for me as wow. well. Yeah. You know? wow. So in telling their stories, it was almost like um, it was an outlet for me as it was for them. It was a platform that was created, mm -hmm. especially um, with that mental health component. You know, we, yeah. we really don't have too many com uh, mental health components that we could attach to art mm -hmm. these days in mm -hmm. particular or any other project. So I wanted to combine that. That's really interesting. Mm. That's really intriguing. And it's so to the point. Mm. Oftentimes, you know, when I, when I go up to talk about mental wellness and mental health to the Office of Mental Health, up in Albany, mm -hmm. about securing funds or what would be uh, good, Mm -hmm. What would help? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it's been my experience that art is like cast to the side. Mm -hmm. Unless it can be um, dictated or can be uh, uh, validated with a Medicaid card, yep. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. art is like tossed to the side. It's mm -hmm. like something, you know, okay, if mm -hmm. we have something left or mm -hmm. if, we, if there's something, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. and, and add stigma to that, add mm -hmm. mental health, mm -hmm. which is a major stigma, to art. And it's like not too many people want to be associated with that. You know, it's hard to really find a platform that can combine the two. And when you do, then you're lucky. But if not, you got to kind of create your own. Mm. Mm. That's the white shirt. So that was yeah. what, cha so tell me about yeah. those challenges. You um, can, you can uh, mm -hmm. uh, with those challenges <laughs> and creating that. <laughs> Yeah. What led you to it, Ozzy? What led me to it is the fact that I didn't have no in, any pictures of my father when he had passed away. Mm -hmm. Okay, to show to you know to show to his grandchildren, mm -hmm. and that um, propelled me. Mm -hmm. And I started going around um, doing little um, street events, and, and next thing I know, I was in a world of history. And I started documenting, okay? And um, what I did do is I found my way to the National Action Network mm -hmm. um, back in 1997 mm -hmm. when I started documenting on the National Action Network. But at that time, I was also documenting um, some of the events that was happening back in 1997, 1998, and 2000, you know, like the killing of Amadou Diallo, like in 1999, mm -hmm. that affected me How on so? tremendously. How so? Because here's a man in his vestibule um, being shot 41 times. When I went up, um, when I went up there at the site that he was killed, I went into the vestibule, mm -hmm. and. I was actually standing there where he got shot to death and he had no chance. He had no way out. It was like a death chamber. So in your mind, you know, what did you think? Could that have been you? Could that have been somebody you love? And uh, Yes, you 100% right. It could have been me. It could have been one of my sons. It could have been my daughter. It could have been anybody. Hmm. And it kind of propelled me to go into um, um, documentary photography because there were so many killings taking place at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what propelled me. When I seen um, the funeral of Amadou Diallo, I actually photographed the funeral of Amadou Diallo. And as I was photographing the funeral of Amadou Diallo, I was crying inside because it could have been anybody. And it just continually, it continued to happen. So what I did is yeah. I, 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 I kind of dedicated my, my um, photography to, to try to um, fix injustices. 
And what has that gone? Where has that taken you? What has that meant to you emotionally as well as? Um, it's, a, it's a part of my development. Um, 15 years ago, okay, I had lost my wife to brain cancer, mm. okay? I didn't know that I was depressed and I was having a mental breakdown because I was trying to keep up this facade that everything is going to be all right. And eventually, you know, so you I had to go you into... So you didn't know it. So, no. I mean, did somebody it's, tell you? Did somebody... Or you just, you were just in, so into the habit, just going on, just, you know? Or yeah, just, going on is, 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 is um, what you call it, like nothing was wrong. And were you into photography then? Or? Yes, I was, mm -hmm. you know. And photography helped me out of my, you know, my mental uh, instability. How so? Okay, because it, it, it became a, a healing, mm -hmm. you know, a healing. And what part did it heal? Is it, it still, is it, my it emotion, a in, you know, is it a work in progress for both of you? Yes, yes, it is work in progress for me. I'm still mm -hmm. um, 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 in therapy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You know, you said something there, both of you, about that, that healing part of photography, mm -hmm. that healing part of the image, you mm -hmm. know. It's not just, for me, it was not just a technical thing, you know. Yes, you know, uh, I took classes and everything, but for me, what is it that I wanted to say and how I wanted to say mm -hmm. it, you mm -hmm. know. To me, it was a friend when I didn't have a friend. Right. For me, it was, you know, a lover when I didn't have one. For me, it was, my goodness, my best friend. And sometimes, like a best friend, you know, as my, my experience, I didn't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be bothered because it was too painful. Mm -hmm. But the more I left it alone, it wouldn't leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Because it was just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Dusty and worn, but it was just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had to, like, pick it up. Mm -hmm. Because it was, it was my two. Yeah. See, when, when, when I was going through some of the um, tragedies in my life at that time, and when I picked up, that, it, it helped me kind of um, um, kind of bring things together slowly mm -hmm. but surely because um, I had a big hole in me um, because prior to me losing my, life, my wife, I had lost a child and stillborn, okay? And after I lost a child and stillborn, then my wife turned around and she died from brain cancer, you know? And these tragedies was like happening one at a time and mm -hmm. one at a time. Mm -hmm. I had to, you know, I had to bring myself up out of that. And I grabbed my camera and I started going out to events and gatherings and protests and demonstrations and things like that. And I, I was catching these images that was kind of trying to express the, the hurting emotions that I had inside because there was other people around me hurting because they were losing their loved ones. Wow, that hurt. So Jose, tell me about that hurt, that oh. hurt and Whoa. the images that you see. I mean, your, your images, I mean, the White Shirt Project, folks, mm -hmm. you got to look it up. <laughs> I mean, it says something. It tells a story. Right. So you know? this is... And how did you find and how did they, your subjects, your, 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 you know, your models, how did that's, they... That's what's interesting, right? So um, I, we all know people all over the place, mm -hmm. our neighbors, families, you know, mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, so I have a, a lot of people that... Um, I'm in their lives, they're in mine, and then that extends outward. Um, I started with my close friends, mm -hmm. and I asked them if they would mind modeling for me. Mm. There was two people in particular. Mm. Um, and uh, when they agreed, I saw what the magic was all about, how the magic could happen, because it, it didn't happen right away. Right. I create a, spa a safe space mm -hmm. for them. It takes about two to three hours right. just to get them comfortable. I get people a shirt, they mm. put it on, 
mm. and then they get to tell me how they feel with and what it. why a white shirt why not an orange shirt or a blue well, shirt what white, was up with that because it's it's white symbolizes a lot of different things to different people uh -huh. you know to some people it could be purity it could mm -hmm. be could be death also mm -hmm. uh, rebirth mm -hmm. um, could be a sign of status right white collar blue collar mm -hmm. um, sanctity so it's it represents different things to different people also um, interestingly enough I had a few people People that work in the corporate world mm -hmm. and when they put on white it's like they they got their head game on they're they're a different person mm -hmm. as soon as they take off that white shirt they they're just like regular people mm -hmm. like us but you know it changes your mood it changes your attitude your whole you know personality yeah. um, but I create a safe space for these people for all my models to come in and just vomit if they want to. My goodness, they did they. And, and all over the place. <laughs> first, yeah. Yeah. So I have to share, I share yeah. what happens to me, uh -huh. all my tragedies, all of this. I mean, I cover everything from A to Z. Indeed. There's nothing that I leave out. So in creating that safe space, mm -hmm. what can you tell me that I haven't already told you? Mm -hmm. You know, so it opens them up. It, mm -hmm. it gives them a, a space where they could say, okay, well, let me just share this. And they use the shirt as a vehicle to do that. Yes. So this goes across the 40, 40 plus models that I've photographed. Yeah, because yeah. getting back, cause when, when I was mm -hmm. looking at your, uh, your images, uh -huh. going through the images, I was getting like images and as they was talking about, yeah. And their narratives, yeah. they were talking about the sadness they felt. Mm -hmm. They were talking about the post-traumatic stress they were going right. through, mm -hmm. the depression, the, the depression. anxiety, mm -hmm. the anger, yep. the feeling like they were invisible. Exactly. And that's just the first project. The second project involves couples, so it's a oh, yes. support network. Mm -hmm. So in the second series, instead of shooting single models, what I did was I shot couples, mm -hmm. sisters, uh, husband, wife, um, we have all demographics. Mm -hmm. We have two trans sisters, wow. mm -hmm. biological trans sisters. Mm -hmm. We have um, a homeless man and a homeless woman mm -hmm. that stuck together all through. They're now living happily in an ocean front in Brooklyn. Wow. Um, we have um, just a whole slew of people that show support, and it doesn't matter who you are, who mm -hmm. you're with, your orientation. You know, support is support, especially Indeed. when you're going through something. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to highlight was that other person that people don't see. You see, because people see me here now, but they don't know who's supporting me when I get off the show. Wow. Mm. So it's that person I wanted to highlight. Well, tell me about the camera and that support. <laughs> what did that support mean to you? Um, and why the camera? I'm going to get back. The why camera? The, why, not the, why not writing or jogging? Or, you okay. know what I'm saying? Well, let me tell you, um, I didn't want to deal with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, part of my... Um, part Even of, that fly, that's what yeah, I'm sorry about. That, that fly is attractive. <laughs> <laughs> part, of, part, of the, um, part of my healing had to do with getting in touch with people again. Yeah. And this was the only way that I was able to do that. So mm -hmm. the camera also um, created a barrier with me not directly interacting with people. Mm -hmm. So it was easier for me to come up to somebody and say, hey, do you mind if I take a yeah. shot? As opposed to starting a conversation. You know, mm -hmm. hi, my name is Jose. You know, mm -hmm. just taking a picture is much easier and walking away. So that camera was like, you're having a conversation. Right. You're not verbally, hello, I'm right. Jose, but still. It was a tool between me right. interacting with another human. Right. That's what that was. It was that vessel. It was exactly. that go between. Mm -hmm. Yep. But still, it was a powerful self. Yes. Can we talk more about that? Okay. Talk about that vessel, Ozzy, that go between. Um, the go between is me being able to have people feel the things that are going on in their community, mm -hmm. the things that are happening, getting them um, sensitized once again. Um, people are becoming insensitized, mm -hmm. you know, systematically through media, you know, mm -hmm. um, being bombarded mm -hmm. where they don't care no more. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is we have to start sensitizing them and I'm able to do it. Uh, with the images that I have, um, it was a, a situation that I took a shot of this um, boy. Um, it was uh, the, the summer of, uh, of, of 2000, mm -hmm. and he was in the park, and he had um, just came out of the, the sprinklers, and he had water over him, 
you know. And when some people see that image, they cry. And I'm saying, what was it, you know, because I didn't understand it, you know, but there's something so deep in photography that people gravitated around that image. And how you know it was so deep? What were your, in because, what were your inspiration? Okay. What made you? Um, and how you know you was getting to those people in the way that you intended to? That's, how do you know you were reaching them? Because... Uh, or was it about them? Or was it about you more so than about them? It was I'm about... I'm going to ask you that too. It, 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 was about, <laughs> it was about me. Okay, you understand? So it was about you. Yeah, okay. it was about me. But what the cameras allowed me to do, it allowed me to take the emotions that I had in myself mm -hmm. or what I was feeling at that time and to be able to project it onto someone else though, so they can feel what I was actually going through. So you're seeing, you're, we're going through that viewfinder, but it's not just with our eyes. As a photographer, as uh, Gordon Park says, <laughs> we're feeling also with our hearts. Yes. You know? Yes. yes. So yes. it's not just about what we see oh. through that viewfinder. Yeah. But what are we seeing with our hearts? Mm -hmm. What are we seeing? What are we feeling? Yes. Tell me about that feeling that through your heart. Through <laughs> your, well, um, it was it was some um, some dark moments, mm -hmm. right? And it was very difficult for me to to tap into that. When when I started shooting and I started hearing the stories, um, I was able to really relate on a totally different label, unbeknownst to them. They didn't mm -hmm. even know how I was relating to them. Mm -hmm. But anything that had to do with tragedy, with death and all that, it, it sets me back to a point where I didn't have advocacy for me. Mm -hmm. And I needed to create this platform to advocate mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. mental health, mm -hmm. to advocate how mental health doesn't stop you from living, mm -hmm. right? And being a productive person mm -hmm. in ways. You know, so if I was able to create this platform for me, I thought about how it could possibly work for somebody else that didn't have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I created that for them. They, these, a lot of the people that I have a shot have never told their story, mm -hmm. have never had that opportunity. And especially to disclose about their mental health status. Right, mm -hmm. right. You that know, stigma. So the stigma. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah. was a great opportunity mm -hmm. for them to come out. This was mm -hmm. their coming out story. Mm -hmm. And I was odd enough to, to capture it. You mm -hmm. know, it was an honor for me to do that. Mm -hmm. People got emotional. People cried. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, it was, it was really mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that um, I had to hold back. What has crying. been the reception outside of the... Oh, it's been... Um, I've had one reception so uh -huh. far um, for the White Shirt Project. I've been featured in a few different things at the Schomburg, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a few mental health conferences. Um, Anything you know, coming up? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So because I was talking about there not being platforms where mental health and events combine, mm -hmm. um, I was forced after knocking on a few doors in the Bronx to create my own platform. Wow. So we created the Bronx LGBT Expo, which is going to go on on June 22nd of this year. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, this is going to be at 111 mm -hmm. Bruckner Boulevard. Um, our host is Bronx Park. But the expo is part mental health. Mm -hmm. It's a mental health conference. Mm -hmm. And then a reception after okay. that. Okay. So I wanted to create an, an exposition that highlighted mental health. June 22nd. June 22nd. Folks, go on uh, this man's website. Mm -hmm. Go on this man's <laughs> site. Check out these wonderful images and learn more about this much needed and, uh, festival. You. What about yourself, yeah. Azim? Talk about it. Um, I want to talk to them. And, um, Piggyback on what he said about uh, the stigma mm -hmm. that's attached to mental health, just like the stigma is attached to the LGBT community, mm -hmm. you know, and the mental health community has to come out to, to kind of break that stigma, you mm -hmm. know, and they have to uh, um, help other people, you know, break that stigma. So we have to, like, we have to come out of these. Uh, uh, um, um, cages, mm -hmm. for the lack of a better word, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to uh, um, express that we, we, we have situations, but I'm not the only one. Mm. And we're able to um, 
come together to help each other heal, mm -hmm. you know. But there's been a great stigma put on the, 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 the mental illness thing that people are afraid to even talk about it, you know, because they're so, uh, they feel so ashamed. You know, and there's nothing to be ashamed about. Mm -hmm. You know, like all of us mm -hmm. have some form of mental illness. You can say that again. You understand? Say that again. Some I'll form of us have, <laughs> 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 have so, got a mental so illness. People who probably didn't hear that too well. <laughs> all of us have a form of mental illness. <laughs> Whether we want to recognize it or not. Some of us haven't been diagnosed yet. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Because yes. the mental illness is so <laughs> heavy. Some people could be, you could be mentally ill and don't even know it mm -hmm. because it's such a thin line. Mm -hmm. And I see people going over that thin line each and every day and they don't even know. Yeah. And that's the frightening part about it. And mm -hmm. also culture. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, oh, you're not crazy. You just go get a drink mm -hmm. or, you know, uh -huh. or something's the matter. But yeah. yeah. Culture also has mm -hmm. a lot to do with that. Oh, just take your med medication. Yeah. <laughs> no. My medication having to be, you know, sometimes I. Well, I maybe get, our medication, I, one of our medications is that camera. <laughs> yes. Remember yeah, that absolutely. camera? Yeah. But Gordon Parks also yeah. said, yeah. weapon of choice is that camera. Yeah. yeah. You know, he said, I'm um, paraphrasing that he picked up his camera because he knew, he, he believed it could be a tool against yeah. racism, yes. against uh, poverty, yeah. and all the ills of social, mm -hmm. you know, all the ills of this society. Yes. So my weapon of choice was that camera. Mm -hmm. As we begin to close and start to wrap up, tell me about uh, anything going on. Oh, well, I got a project. Um um, going on right now as we speak. I have it, um, okay. wall, um, walls, um, wall art. Okay. And it's on, um, exhibition at, um, at food court at 66 West 116th Street. Okay. 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 And, um, it's, um, We're persons. We're going to have to start to yeah, wrap up, but... Okay, they, they, they allowed me to, to hang my work, and okay. you can come in and see the work. Guys, look up Azine Thomas. But right now, we're going to uh, start to wrap up. We're going to wrap up mental health in you, but we ain't going to wrap up this discussion. <laughs> Photography as a healing tool. I want to thank again my guests, Azine Thomas, yeah. Jose Ramon, and um, Photography as a Healing Tool. I want to thank the BronxNet and all the engineers and their producers. And to next time, peace and light and continue photographing. Be well.